In this video, we will conduct the short run production function analysis by using the optimization tools. The short run production function doesn't include all factors of production as input variables because we know that capital usually is not easy to change in the short run. So this is why it is kept as constant and this bar on, on it uh, represents that capital is a is considered as a constant and when we do so a constant thing is not included in the function as an independent variable therefore we can only see labor in the next step and capital is silenced now this uh, can be a, a, you know a critical value that is marginal product of labor and we can calculate it simply by taking the derivative of the production function with respect to labor and we can also write it like FL because definitely it's a derivative with respect to labor and it is greater than zero and it is going to show that there is a positive relationship. Now it is something that we observe in our economic theory that the relationship between labor and the output is positive generally speaking so it is a positive value. However uh, the second derivative that is the rate of change of the derivative of uh, production function with respect to labor is negative. It means that there it is increasing at a decreasing rate and there is diminishing returns in this production function. And this is also visible here that there is a decreasing, uh, increasing at a decreasing rate trend in this production function which is supported by our economic theory. Now let's take an example, uh, uh, here we can see a production function where there is no capital in it. It means that this is a short run production function. Now we can do this uh, uh, calculation uh, where we are going to keep k as a silent uh, variable. We can calculate the average production function simply by dividing the production function with labor and this is what we did here and the uh, simplification will lead us to this average production function labor. Now if we want to optimize this production function and that is the average production function of labor we can do this simply by calculating the first order condition and then second order condition and in the process finding the critical value. So this is the average product of labor that we have taken the derivative of with respect to labor as labor is the independent variable. And when we solved it, we found that uh, it was equal to this expression and it was put equal to zero because this is the requirement of the first order condition that we put the first order derivative equal to zero. Solving this, we get the labor value that is the critical value of labor which is 30. So we note this because this is very important and then we come to the second order condition and definitely in the second order condition we take the second derivative of the first order derivative that we have already calculated. Now the answer would be minus 0.2 that you can verify by calculating this thing. It is negative so it represents a maximum. So this is good because we want to maximize the average product of labor that is how much each uh, uh, l unit of labor is producing. So how we can find the average product of labor at maximum? We can simply put this critical value in the production fun uh, average production function. So here you can see 30 is put here as well as there. And when we solve it, we get the average product of labor at maximum level, which would be equal to 102. However, we can also try to maximize the marginal product of labor as well because uh, we have already found the marginal uh, average product of labor. Now uh, we have to calculate the marginal product of labor before we try to maximize it. For that you know that we have to put, uh, differentiate the total function that is the production function with respect to labor. So marginal product of labor is equal to the derivative of the labor with respect to la uh, of this function, a derivative of the production function with respect to labor, precisely speaking. And this would be the answer that is marginal product of labor. You can do this simple calculation of finding the derivative. Now the process of optimization will start. So the marginal product of labor function is here. 
we take its first derivative for the first order condition and this is where we have calculated it we have put it equal to zero because first order condition requires the equality of the first order derivative to zero so this would be the answer and when we simplify this for labor this would be the critical value this is this is the critical value of labor and then the second order condition should also be satisfied so the second order derivative or marginal product of labor will be equal to this so when we calculate the uh, second order derivative of the first order derivative we will get this answer that is minus 0.6 which is less than 0 which signifies that we are dealing with the maximum so we can find that maximum value of marginal product of labor simply by putting lab uh, labor that is 20 the critical value in place of the uh, marginal product of labor function here you are this uh, critical value is being substituted here again and then here again so the marginal product of labor at maximum would be 132 so we have tried to maximize the average product of labor as well as the marginal product of labor and now we can visualize the diagram that explains the relationship between the two here we have the labor and here we have the wage uh, and the labor product so the marginal product of labor is having this curve which is ab above the other curve at least for this segment and then th we have average product of labor curve which is slightly lower as compared to the other curve so we have tried to find this point that is the maximum point at which the marginal product of labor is maximum we have also found this value which is the point where the average product of labor gets maximized so by doing the optimization bo of both that is average product of labor and marginal product of labor we have tried to optimize both of them so in this way we have learnt a very a very important lesson that optimization can be extended to any uh, economic function may it be total product may it be marginal product may it be average product so this has enabled us to optimize any economic function that we might confront in our economic analysis thank you